In this video, I will explain Buddhism and the Mexican sorcery known as Nawalism from the perspective of quantum mechanics. All matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are made up of electrons, protons, and neutrons. These electrons, protons, neutrons, and photons, the smallest units of light, are called quanta. Then, I will explain the famous double slit experiment of quantum mechanics. First, we put a plate with two slits in front of a screen. Then, electrons are shot into the slits one at a time. If the electrons are particles, two lines should appear on the screen. In reality, however, an interference pattern is created on the screen. This proves that electrons are waves, not particles. Even more surprisingly, when we set up our instruments to study the orbit of the electron, no interference pattern appears, but two lines appear on the screen. So, a quantum has the properties of a wave, but when observed, it has the properties of a particle. This is called wave particle duality. The electrons do not orbit the nucleus, but the electrons cover the nucleus like a cloud existing here and there at the same time. This is called quantum superposition. The position of the electrons is only known when they are observed. Buddhism also explains that this phenomenal world is emptiness and all things are non-substantial. And it explains that things exist and dependence on other things. This is called dependent co-arising. Nawalism also explains that this phenomenal world is born from the world of Nawal, which transcends the duality of subjectivity and objectivity. It also explains that everything is vibrational energy. Next, I will explain the phenomenon of quantum entanglement in quantum mechanics. Quantum entanglement is a phenomenon in which quanta are strongly bound to each other. First, in an experiment, a photon of light is split into two photons. Two photons in this quantum superposition state are moved to Tokyo and Paris, respectively. And, as soon as one photon is observed, the both photons are immediately determined from the superposition state to the particle state. Whenever one particle is measured to be spinning up, the other is always found to be spinning down. Whenever one particle is measured to be spinning down, the other is always found to be spinning up. Let's examine this phenomenon from the perspective of dependent co-arising in Buddhism. 
the quantum itself is emptiness because it is in a state of quantum superposition. And attributes are created by quantum entanglement of two or more quanta. That is, by dependent co arising in Buddhism. Then, when the observer observes one of the photons, the observer and the two photons become entangled. Then, the observer can observe that attribute. This phenomenal world is a web of quantum entanglements. Quantum entanglements are spread out like spider webs. And the field of the phenomenal world is made up of these entanglements. Furthermore, in this quantum entanglement experiment, even if you took one of the quanta to the moon, you would get the same result. Information is instantaneously transferred between the two quanta at speeds faster than the speed of light. In quantum entanglement, quanta are connected across space and time. Buddhism and Nawalism explain that past karma has affected the present beyond time and space. As explained in a previous video, Nawalism has the training methods of the recapitulation. The purpose of recapitulation is to release your energy that is trapped by past events or past people and gather it into yourself. Next, I will explain the practice of Tibetan Buddhism. In Buddhism, there is the idea that the mind is also born from dependent co-arising, that is, quantum entanglement. And suffering arises because the mind becomes attached to things that are non-substantial and impermanent. First, through practice, you must free your mind from attachments and gather it to yourself. The goal is to completely dissolve the mind into emptiness beyond duality and enter the clear light. Next, I will explain the practice of Nawalism. Nawalism explains that a person is an egg-shaped bubble of energy. And then there is the place where the bubble and the external energy merge and shine. In other words, this is quantum entanglement. This is where consciousness is born. This is called the assemblage point. The sorcerer accumulates his own energy and gradually moves the radiance of consciousness from the outside of the bubble to the inside of the bubble. And the goal is to connect with the truths deep within the heart and let the bubble of energy shine throughout. In both Tibetan Buddhism and Nawalism, you first free the mind or your energy from the bondage of quantum entanglement. Then you gather that mind and dissolve it into emptiness beyond duality. Then, you experience the true form of energy, where 
there is no distinction between subjective and objective. From there, you create an immortal astral body. And you free yourself from reincarnation.